board in here. And just like before, I'm gonna use the first hour just to cover the material, try to get ahead and try to, you know, get in synchrony with this schedule. Okay, so last time uh, we finished alternating current circuits. Okay, and now what we gotta do now is the electromagnetic waves. Okay, and then we can have our lab, lab seven. Don't forget, lab five and six are due now. Right, uh, let's uh, bold face that and uh, chapter 24. Okay, so let me, I'm going to review quickly the laws of physics because it's going to be important for this chapter. I don't like the way the book did uh, this chapter, okay? There's some missing information there. There's some information that's missing for you to completely understand electromagnetic waves. So I'm going to do, I'm gonna go a little bit beyond the book. 26, 23, week number 12, right? Electromagnetic wave has everything to do with the laws of physics. In week 12. Chapter. Chapter 24. Chapter 24. Okay. You know, the electromagnetic waves, electromagnetic waves. You know, it's, it's, it's very difficult to emphasize how important was the discovery of electromagnetic waves. It's very, not, not just electromagnetic induction was important. It's, it's important to our civilization nowadays. Without electromagnetic induction, we couldn't have electricity at home. We couldn't transmit electricity through long distances. So let me just emphasize you how important this is all this theory that I am, uh, you know, that I'm, that I'm talking about, right? Uh, here, it's very difficult to emphasize the importance of this material that we are teaching, right? This material that we are, that I'm teaching, you know? Especially, the electromagnetic, electromagnetic, which I like to call electric induction. Especially the phenomenon Of, of electromagnetic induction and electromagnetic waves. Okay. Okay. Uh, it is uh, especially the phenomena. The phenomena, right? Of electro, uh, even more than that, not just electromagnetic induction, but uh, magnetic, the phenomenon of magnetic force, electromagnetic induction, and electromagnetic waves. Okay. Okay. Without understanding the magnetic force. We cannot build and we cannot understand and build, right? Understand and build electric motors. And we have electric motors all over the place nowadays. OK. 
Okay. Without understanding electromagnetic induction or electric induction. We cannot understand how electricity is produced out of mechanical work. Okay. It's because, again, it's because of electromagnetic induction. It is because of electromagnetic induction that we have electricity at home that is transmitted from long distances. Okay. Without, uh, also, without understanding electromagnetic waves. Without the understanding of electromagnetic waves, maybe, you know, the understanding of electromagnetic induction, right? Let's write this way. Without the understanding of magnetic, magnetic force, the understanding of magnetic force, and everything else, right? Not just those three topics, but everything else that we have been uh, we have been teaching. Without the understanding of electromagnetic waves, we can not. We couldn't have. We could not have long distance communications with uh, long distance. I'm gonna put a why even more important. Not just regular long distance, but long distance wireless communication that we have today, we have today with the cell phones, with our cell phones. And every, and all the circuitry in your cell phones also is dependent on all the theory, you know, and, and just on all the theory that we are teaching, you know, just to mention a few things, okay? And everything goes back to the laws of physics and everything, uh, goes back to the loss of electricity and magnetism of E and M. And we are going to spell them out all over again. What are those laws of electricity and magnetism? I have a Let's go back here. I'm going to copy and paste, right? Those laws that I typed before. Also, don't forget, right? And all of that is capable, is, is, is possible because of those basic devices, the capacitor, the resistor, the inductor, and the transistor. The last section of the previous chapter dealt with semiconductor devices, which Transistor is one of them, okay? But again, anything related to the transistor or semiconductor devices, material for a more advanced course. Anyway, we uh, you should be familiar now with those three, at least three of those most basic devices that we find in electricity and magnitudes, capacitor, resistor, and inductor. Transistor is for a more advanced course. And the guy, you know, who invented the transistor we invented the transistor. Let, let's spell that out here. We invented the transistor. The first practical transistor, right? First practical transistor won the Nobel Prize. And let's see if I can find the, all those laws of... Okay, that's one of them, right? But I want to... Mm, I want to get... All those lost together. Let's see if I can find it here for you. Okay. And that you have to have on the tip of your tongue, right? You have to have it memorized. It has, you know, the laws of physics must be first nature to you all. Okay, it must be this one. Okay, that's the one. 
laws of physics. Goes back to the laws of electricity and magnetism. You know, the electric flux, right, is equal to the charge enclosed by imaginary Gaussian surface. And let's not forget that electric flux. Uh, let's see if I know it doesn't like that. Right? Oh, gosh. Huh? Parallel? Is, is it going to like it? No, it's not going to like it. Parallel. Okay? Parallel to A, to the A vector. And should be you should have more, if in case that you have more than one surface, right, you should put this subscript here. And let's not forget that we have that summation that goes here. PAR stands for electric field parallel to the area vector of your imaginary Gaussian surface goes from one uh, to n surfaces, depending on the surface that you choose. You have something similar for the magnetic field, but instead it's gonna be, don't forget this is parallel, okay? I don't know any other, it's like the guys, they're not gonna accept, maybe they accept this one. Okay, here you go. That's, they wouldn't accept the correct symbol for parallel, but they would accept this inverted symbol for parallel has all everything to do is the software, okay? Here's the area vector. Don't forget, it's the magnetic field parallel to the area vector, the electric field parallel to the area vector. The electric field vector parallel to the area vector. And uh, we have electromagnetic induction, the law of electromagnetic induction. What you have here is Ohm's law for the induced for the induced uh, electric potential. And let's not forget everywhere, every time that you have an electric potential, you have an electric field associated with that. In this last equation, okay? In this last equation, that there is more to this last equation. There is more to this last equation. It is not just a change in magnetic flux. It's not just that a change in magnetic flux induces an electric current or an electric potential, okay? There is more to that, there's far more to that. In reality, let uh, the change in magnetic flux the change in magnet in reality the change in magnetic flux induces not just a current but induces an electric field okay induces an electric field. That's the most important thing that you have to, to understand. And this and this and this e field is induced not just inside materials but also in free space. Okay? but also in free space. You don't need to have a current to have a current in, you don't need to have a, a circuit to have a current induced in this circuit. You do not have to have a conductor to have a current induced or an electric potential induced in, inside the conductor. You can induce an electric field in free space in vacuum itself. And I have a very good illustration for that. That um, you you must have seen that before. 
but I just brush it up very quickly. Let's see here. Oh yeah, right in here. This one, okay? This one you must remember, right? He go, carrying a current in counterclockwise direction. Let me see here. Yeah, this induced, uh, okay, this induced. Uh, uh, if you have a solenoid carrying a current, you have a magnetic field, okay? That you know. But on the top of that, If you have a, a magnetic field that changes in time, something else happens. You already know, right? No, not something else happens. You already know that this magnetic field that changes in time induces a current and electric potential difference, okay? But it's also, you know, associated with the electric potential difference, associated with this induced current, you also have this invisible electric field that is induced around the magnetic field. It's a very important, uh, yeah, and that's, uh, you know, that's implicit in our, in our equations of electro electromagnetism. And so that equation that you saw there can be even further written in uh, a slightly different way. Okay, it should be an elect an induced electric field that's parallel to a pass that I call delta L. Okay. In much the same way that we had, I and mean, now I'm calling that an induced electric field. And I'm going to say that induced an electric field that circulates, and this, this electric field has this characteristic. This electric field circulates around the magnetic field, the changing magnetic field. So we have one more, you know, one more term that uh, that goes here. And by the way, it seems that I have for there is one more one more equation, right? That we study. Let me see if I can find that equation here, ready for you. Go ahead, try to digest everything that I told you. Uh, let's see here. There's one more equation that I that we used before, the one that deals with the magnetic field. And we use that law to calculate the magnetic field due to a current, to a current distribution. Mm -hmm. Let's see, that's the induced, must have, which was this, the chapter before. Okay, that's a numerical example in the book, right? And it's very important to learn all the stuff before so you can, it's, uh, you know, it's all connected here. See, this one, that's not this one. Electromagnetic induction. <laughs> Must be this chapter here. Yeah, that's the one. This is the law. For some reason, I didn't put this law there in that first uh, list of. Uh... Here you go. That's the one. Yeah, see, he, he accepted that. Huh? Yeah, there is this all other one here. That I should have uh, put it. And it comes before the other one here, right? Here you go. L and uh, interesting that he accepted here. Let me see if I can get it as well. I put I specifically state induced electric fields 
So you know it's not the regular static electric field that uh, occurs whenever you have an electric charge distribution. Okay, so those are the five laws of physics. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, uh, we usually put this one aside, you know, and we have all those four laws that we call the, well, with a, the Maxwell's equation. And here is Lorentz's first law. I want to tell you exactly what this Maxwell's equation is all about. And those are the Maxwell's equations that, uh, those are the equations that uh, predict the existence, those are the equations that predict the existence of uh, electromagnetic waves. Okay. I'm going to erase this one because we don't need. And uh, I'm going to take a little break here because I have to turn on my air conditioning again. Oh, there are more students, huh? There are hands. Okay. So if you're waiting too long there outside, I just saw you two there in the waiting list, in the waiting room, right? So I'm taking a little break here to close the window, okay? Hang in there. Okay, I'm back. Okay. So now I'm going to summarize here. At this point, we have two different types of, mm, of electric fields. At this point, the laws of physics predicts two different types of electric field. And just one type of magnetic field. These five laws of physics predict two different types of electromagnetic fields, of electric fields and just one type of magnetic fields. Okay. The first type of magnet of electric fields, of electric and magnetic fields. are the ones that are generated by the sources, okay? You know, we call the, uh, we call them the electrostatic, we call them uh, the electrostatic, electrostatic and magnetostatic fields. The electrostatic field, electrostatic field is generated by electric charges that are at rest. That's why you call it electrostatic, because the charge is at rest. The magnetostatic, magnetostatic field. Yeah, I can I can just uh, copy and paste here, and just have to change it. Eh? The magnetos just have to change a little bit here. The magnetostatic field is generated not by electric charges at rest, but by electric currents that 
do not change in time. Do not change in time. That's why, you know, I, which, uh, which are referred, which are referred to as electrostatic current, right? Then in addition to the electrostatic field, now you know that this, there is this other type of field. In addition to the electrostatic field, now you can see that there is this other electric field that is induced by a changing magnetic fields, okay? And it's exactly that what you saw here in my illustration, okay? The induced field that circulates around the magnetic field. Now you can see that there is another, right? Electric field that's induced by a changing magnetic field. This induced field circulates around the magnetic field. Whereas this electrostatic field, electrostatic field radiates from the so from its sources, from its sources, the electric charges. And recall the, the magnetic magnetostatic field. You know, it's not an induced field, but it also this field circulates around its sources. What are the sources? The electric current. Can you picture that? I'm gonna make a, a table here. So you can see better. So now we have those two different types of electric fields. Actually, they are not different. Okay? They're not different. They're just a emanation of uh, something more genetic. Okay. We have. Uh, these two electric fields that one, you know, radiates from the source and the other circulates around its source, right? This one circulates around its source. And its source is a changing magnetic flux, not field, but flux. Hey. Uh, okay, good. And the magnetic field that circulates around the electric current as well. Let's go ahead and do a table here. Table one, two, three, four. Oh, no, not our own. One, five. One, two, three, four, five. Right? Am I right? Yeah, I'm going to put five here. Source. Yeah, let's put this way for now. Electrostatic. Static, prostatic, magnetostatic, e induced, and believe it or not, you know, I'm talking just about three here. Believe it or not, people discover that we have a fourth type of field, which is not electric, is not a, a induced electric field, but a magnetic field that can also be the induced, okay? The electrostatic is the one that relates to the source, right? Generated by a source. And source. By the source. Source, let's see, here you go. Let's put it this way. And uh, this is not spelled out in the laws yet. That was the great, uh, one of the greatest discoveries that was made back in the mid 19th century, in the mid 1800s, those, you know, 
not just this one here, but this one as well. Okay, let's see what's the source. Source is an electric charge. Source of electrostatic field is an electric charge. We say it's electrostatic because it exists when a charge is at rest. If the charge is moving, you still have electrostatic there as well. But then you're going to have something else. If a charge is moving, then you're going to have a magnetic field. A moving charge is an electric current. Okay? And then we are going to have this induced field that you already know. That the source is what? Uh, changing. The flux. Magnetic flux. That's the source. Behavior. Behavior of the electrostatic field. It radiates from the source. The magnetic field circulates around its own source, which is the electric current. And I already mentioned to you right now that this electric field that's induced by a changing magnetic field it also circulates around the, the magnetic field. Circulates around the source. Okay, radiates from, uh, circulates around. Uh, when I mean around, I mean around the source, circulates around. And then we still have this one, this mysterious one that I, haven't elaborated on that yet, which by the way is not included in the equations yet. In the equations of electricity and magnetism. Uh, radiates from, uh, I'm gonna leave this way, from the source. Yeah, let's see. Okay. So what else do you have here for this, okay? For this induced magnetic field. You know, this is a law of physics. We observe that experimentally. We cannot derive it mathematically. And you still have to remember that, okay? So notice that my induced magnetic field, okay? Is generated by a changing in the magnetic flux. Interesting enough, nature has this symmetry that, uh, that reflects itself in this law that I'm going to state in a qualitative format. If the le induced electric field happens whenever you generate a change in magnetic flux, an induced magnetic field is going to be exactly the opposite. It's going to, it's going to have a source that's going to be a changing electric flux. And in this case as well, you are going to have an induced electric field that circulates around the source behavior. So you have one field that radiates from the source and three fields that circulate around the source. Those two fields that are kind of indistinguishable from each other, okay? Both the electrostatic and the, the electric induced field, they're indistinguishable, they're exactly the same fields. Magnetostatic and magnetic induced is also indistinguishable from each other. And now that we have this other induced field, we have to adjust our loss. I'm gonna copy that. And hopefully I'll be able to illustrate that too. Okay. To account for this new, mag new type of magnetic field, we must adjust 
the loss of the x. Okay, it's gonna be in the following way. Okay, and this adjustment is gonna be in this law here. That was a discovery again that was made in the mid 19, 1800s, in the mid 1800s, in the 19th century. Okay, and that's going to be, it was a discovery by a guy named uh, Maxwell, James Clark Maxwell. You? Not. And what goes here is going to be the change, not of magnetic flux, but the change in electric flux, okay? This correction to the laws of electromagnetic field has everything to do with electromagnetic waves. I wanna both face it. This correction to the loss of the enema the bold faced term has everything to do with the existence of electromagnetic waves, electromagnetic waves. Okay. Now we have the following. Now we have the following, a changing magnetic field induces an electric field, a changing magnetic flux, right? That's what the flux induces an electric field. And conversely, a changing electric flux induces a magnetic field. But there is more, it's not just that. We're doing step by step here, right? Let's uh, give you a little bit of time to think about that. Okay, I use a magnetic field. So the story is like that. One, it was discovered that static charges, you know, produces an electric field, right? Electric field. It was also discovered that uh, moving, not just static charges, moving charges, charges, that, that charges that move with constant velocity, charges that move with constant velocity produces a magnetic field. And I'm going to emphasize here that in both cases, they are static electric field. There is one is there are static fields, both static, electric, and magnetic. That static charges produce an static electric field, which was also discovered. The charges that move with constant velocity, and I'm going to put it between parentheses, a static electric current produces an static magnetic fields. And then what was discovered? Okay. Also, 
you know? Charges that change velocity, okay? That would, and that this one we call a dynamic current produces a magnetic field that changes in time, right? This is not a law. It was discovered that this type of field induces an electric induces an electric field that powers a current in a circuit without a battery, right? Without a battery. The law of electric induction. The law of electric induction. And finally, 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 it was discovered that a changing electric Flux induces a B field. Two ways to create a magnetic field. How can you generate a changing electric field? How can you generate a, a changing magnetic? You already know how to right how to to create a changing magnetic field, but how can you create a changing electric field that consequently are changing electric flux. You know, how can you create a changing electric field and consequently a changing electric flux, right? That's not difficult, that's not difficult, okay? It has everything to do with moving charges. Everything to do is has everything to do with moving charges. Okay, and that's illustrated nicely in your book here. That's what antennas are all about. And antennas are nothing more than AC circuits. It's nothing more than AC circuits. You can, because we have AC source. We have a power outlet at home. We are generating electromagnetic fields all the time, okay? One way to generate a, a, an electromagnetic field is by creating an antenna that I mentioned to you. And how can you create an antenna? That's a very simple way of creating an antenna. All you have to do is to get your, I'm gonna get here. Here's my plug, right? Here's the plug that goes in my electricity. See here. Oh, let's see if you can see me well. Uh, yeah, but I have to stop chart. Uh, okay, here you go. Here's my plug that goes into the electricity, right? I think I have something better even. Okay, here you I have another one that's even better for you to understand. Okay, here you go. Um, another student coming in, here you go. Okay, here's a, one thing that goes into your outlet, right? Charge my cell phone. The moment I plug into the outlet, the AC current is gonna get into this wire and it's gonna move back and forth, okay? The fact that the electric current, the electric charges are moving back and forth, are changing its velocity as time goes by, turns this device here into an antenna. Same antenna that you have uh, there in your car, okay? And because we have those electric charges moving back and forth, you are creating an electric field. And by the way, with different velocities, right? You're creating an electric field that changes in time, okay? And we have exactly here an illustration in your book. 
that shows how it, uh, it allows you to visualize what happens. Here you go. You have this AC source, which is your electrical outlet, right? Here, what you have right here is just your electrical outlet at home. You plug it into this electric outlet. You have one wire that goes in one direction. You have another wire that goes in another direction. You leave the ends of your wire free, like uh, this one. Here you go. Here you go. I'm going to stop sharing again. Here you go. Here's two wires of copper, two copper wires. I plug one in one polarity of the outlet. I plug this other one in the other polarity of the outlet. You know, the moment I do that, those two ends of my wire are going to behave like an antenna, okay? Are going to behave like an antenna, just like you see in this illustration here of the book. Here you go. Here's what, where you plug into the wall. Here's one end of the wire. Here's the other end of the wire. You have a given instant of time. You have no charges here at the end of the wire because the current uh, is zero, basically. But then the current builds up to a maximum value. Do you see that? And you have an accumulation of charges at the, at the end of your wire or your antenna. And then, you know, it becomes zero again because, like I said, it's a uh, AC device and then the current inverse direction right the current is inverse direction then the other end is going to be negatively charged and positively charged that's how you have to visualize and then it becomes neutral again it starts as a neutral the end starts as a neutral then becomes maximum charge at the end with positive with with opposite charges at the end of the wire you know then the current is moving the other direction it's going to become electrically neutral at the tips and so on, okay? What's happening here? The, we are generating an electric field that changes in time. At time t equal to zero, the electric field is zero. A little bit later on, the electric field is maximum because you have a maximum concentration of charges at the end of your antenna. Between zero and this instant of time, the electric field is increasing, okay, in magnitude. And then, you know, you have uh, everything else in between, right? It becomes zero again at the end of your antenna. Consequently, the electric field decreases to zero, okay? So between here and here, you have all this decrease in the electric field intensity, okay? And you keep on drawing a sinusoidal wave as, as you go, okay? What the Maxwell's equation shows to us is that you do form a wave, an invisible wave. We have mechanical waves that are visible, right? That's why we study them. We have water waves that are visible, but then we have this invisible electric wave that behaves just like our wave, has almost the same characteristics with a very important distinction. This wave travels at a speed that's very fast, 300,000 kilometers per second. But there is more to it, okay? That was what was discovered in the mid-1800s. Uh, they, they came up with this, even before the 1800s, even before 1850, people came with this conceptual, this gut, uh, this gut idea that something like that was possible, right? But they still couldn't prove. And then one guy, James Clark Maxwell, came up with a mathematical solution that, that gave mathematical, that gave theoretical support to this idea of electromagnetic waves. Okay, so let's... And let's not forget that a change in electric flux also induces a magnetic field. So associated with this electric wave, there is also a magnetic wave. Let's see if we have it here. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, here you go. Here is my antenna. This type of antenna is known as a dipole antenna. Which Why is dipole antenna? Because you have uh, 
a dipole distribution of charges, okay? One end is gonna become uh, positively charged, the other negatively charged, right? This antenna initially generates a change in electric field, a chain, uh, that uh, is, in reality, an electric wave that propagates away from the source. But because we have a change in electric field, this change in electric field induces a magnetic field, uh, a wave of magnetic field that tags along the electric wave. That's how the story goes, OK? This magnetic field is towards the positive uh, z direction. This other one is towards the negative direction. Okay, so let's let's summarize here what you see. And by the way, this is just one type of of uh, antenna. There are in reality there are two important types of antenna. Let's see if they have one here. Doesn't look like they have one here. Okay, see this uh, this antenna here. This antenna basically is connected to a power outlet, but there is another way of 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 doing the same thing. There's another way of doing the same thing. You know, you can also connect this antenna to the LC circuit that behaves just like a, an AC generator. Okay, so he got, and that's what we have here. We have the circuit that produces that current that bounces back and forth using this electric dipole antenna. Okay, and then, we have this other type of antenna, okay? Do you see it's not a straight wire? What you see right in here, let me show you, let me show you. What you see right in here, in my hand, connected to an AC source is nothing but an electric dipole antenna, okay? An electric dipole antenna. But then you can come up with a different type of antenna. A different type of antenna is a loop, just like a coil, let's say a, a how do you call it? it will, a solenoid, right? A solenoid that's connected to your outlet there at home. Man, this thing, these alligators are terrible. Let's see, I've got to get it connected here. I'm going to make my loop here. Oh, keep on sliding my hand. That's terrible. I need a better alligator clip here. That's not, oh, here you go. I got it finally. Okay, if I turn it around, it's going to become a, a loop, right? But I need more than that. What I, have, what, what I have to do to generate an electromagnetic wave, I need to connect this loop to my power line, either to my power line or to my, LC circuit that behaves just like a power line. When you have a device like that, you create what we call an electric di a magnetic dipole antenna. Okay. So I'm going to write here go. That's another type of antenna. Uh, magnetic dipole antenna right here. They can both transmit and receive, by the way. Okay, I'm gonna write that down, all that for you. The ship mass indicates that both the straight and loop antennas are being used to communicate with other vessels. Okay, so we have a, a straight antenna is the electric dipole antenna and the loop antenna is the magnetic dipole antenna. Okay. So here you go, a radio antenna receiving, is a receiving antenna wire that's parallel to the electric field. Uh, this one is to show that the radiation should far from the antenna and at the indicated time, okay? Study that carefully, okay? So let's write that down. And that's the whole idea about the electromagnetic waves, okay? Okay, so how can you change? How can you create a change in electric field, and consequently a change in electric flux? You do that. 
by connecting two wires to the outlet of your house. Or, in other, or, in other words, other words, connect your two wires to an AC source, source or circuit, okay? And don't forget an AC source is a generator. If you don't have a generator, you can have an AC circuit. Whereas an AC circuit is a circuit that has an inductor, L, and a capacitor, C. That's another way. Okay, in this type of circuit, the current is going to change in time. Now, let's see, the velo not, not the circuit, not the current. The velocity of the charges is going to change in time. And these charges will produce um, let's see, in this type of circuit, the velocity and position, right? And position of this charge is going to change in time, and these charges will produce a varying magnetic field, a varying electric field. But this same charges that have changing and you know, variable velocities variable velocities are also producing a magnetic field. Are also producing magnetic field, Randy Batista, here you go. Magnetic field that changes in time, okay? These, right? The same charges. The result is an electric and magnetic wave that radiates away from your circuit. Okay? These types of circuit behave like antennas. Antennas that radiate electromagnetic and, ele and electro, that's why you call it electromagnetic because the, the magnetic field, you know, is tagging along with the electric field and the electromagnetic wave. This wave propagates at the speed of the light, speed of the light, speed of light, speed of light, right? In vacuum and air, and air, the speed of light is 300,000 kilometers per second. It's not difficult to remember, right? It's a very important speed. You must remember that. In other materials, like glass, like glass and plastic, glass, plastic, and water, right? Glass, plastic, and water. This is speed, glass, plastic, water, etc. right? Let's put it this way, et cetera. This speed is less. This type of circuits behave like antennas that radiate, that radiate electromagnetic waves. Okay, electromagnetic waves. Okay. There are two types of antennas. The straight antennas, no? 
the straight antenna, which are the electric dipole antenna, and the loop antenna, which are magnetic dipole antennas. They're called also magnetic. Let's look some uh, some uh, illustrations of electric dipole antenna and magnetic dipole, real life ones, right? Electric dipole antenna. Okay, let's see. Okay, that's a nice illustration here. Okay, that's a nice illustration here. Is this one? Yeah, this one is an electric dipole antenna, definitely. Because you have this, see the this bar is a straight antenna, okay. But here's another simplified illustration of an antenna, okay. Producing an electromagnetic wave. Here's an illustration of electromagnet. The current goes back and forth. Okay, it goes back and forth. See that the arrow. Let's see if I can. Uh, let's see, okay, here, Wikipedia has a electric dipole antenna, two wires, right? And you have a current flowing, AC current flowing. Back and forth, back and forth in both, both sides of the antenna. Let's see, dipole antenna, this one, dipole antenna, there you go. That's the illustration that you saw before. See here the simulation, right? See the current flowing in one direction. Look how what happens to, to the polarity here at the tip of the antenna. It keep on changing, positive and negative. The amount of charge also changes as time goes by. Okay, producing an electric field. The green here is the electric field. have a potential difference between those two ends. You have a resistor here. The circuit, by the way, is an open circuit. AC circuits don't have to be closed. They can, can, they can be open circuits. And you're sure going to have a current, OK? The charges accumulate here at the end, but they still keep on moving, OK? Again, at any given instant oh, of sir, time. We cannot see your screen. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Let me. <laughs> okay, so here you go. Let me let's let's repeat everything that I said. Right, this is in Wikipedia. Here's an illustration of an electric dipole antenna. Nine forty-seven. Oh my goodness! Let's see. I've been doing that for a long time. I'm ten minutes, almost ten minutes. Okay, here you go. Here's an illustration of an electric dipole antenna. Okay. So this device is connected to the AC source, and you're going to have current flowing back and forth here, back and forth here. During this back and forth flowing, you're going to build up positive charges here and negative charges here, OK? As time goes by, those two ends become electrically neutral. And a little bit later, the, the polarity of the antenna inverts become negative here and positive here, okay? And that's what the next uh, simulation is all about. Let's see. Okay, here you go. That's what the simulation is all about. It's going too fast for me, unfortunately. I do not know if I can change the speed of the simulation. It doesn't look like. Do you, do you notice the, the accumulation of electric charges here at the end? Can I? Oh, no. Oh, oh, oh. Ay, my goodness, how do I go back now? <laughs> I blew up this. Okay, the accumulation of charges here. Let's see how I, I can get out of this. Oh, gosh. I should go. Okay, now I got it. See, we have this accumulation. And here we have a source of AC current. And that's the load. We call it the load. The load is the resistor, right? It's loading the circuit. At a specific instant of time between changing from positive to negative, we have the antenna become neutrally 
charge it at both tips, okay? And then the charge keep on building up until its maximum value, and then the charge, and then the current change direction of propagation. Every time that the current is moving away from the tip, the tip is becoming less positive. See that? Every time that the, the current moves away from the tip, okay, the, uh, the tip becomes less positive or more negative, right? Every time that the current goes towards the tip, it becomes positive. See that? Becomes more positive. Right? That's what you can see here. So you're depleting the positive charges every time that the current moves away from the tip. You're depleting the positive charges every time the current moves away from the tip. Similarly, as the, char as the current moves away from the tip, you're building, you start to build up the negative charges. You start to decrease the positive charges and build up the negative charges. Just by having this change in electric charge, you generate an electric field that, not just an electric field, but you generate an electric wave, okay? And because this electric wave is changing as time goes by, it also induces a magnetic field. Let's see if we have a magnetic dipole, electric dipole, magnetic dipole antenna here. Okay, electric dipole. This is a type of electric dipole antenna. We, we call it half of wavelength. You don't need to worry about that in this course. No, that's uh, that's for a different type of course. Dipole antenna in the Ukrainian UTR-2 radio telescope. Is this, what it, it seems to me a magnetic dipole antenna. This is a loop, see that? It doesn't say whether it's a magnetic dipole or electric dipole, but most likely it's an electric dipole, a magnetic dipole antenna, what you saw in there, a real life. Let's see. A magnetic dipole. Oh, he doesn't have it. What a shame. Okay. He has dipole antenna, but... Uh, huh. Let's see here, magnetic dipole antenna, magnetic dipole antenna. Search page contain magnetic dipole. Mm, magnetic dipole thing does not exist, unfortunately. Ah, it says loop antenna. Okay. Loop antenna. Let's see. Loop antenna. Okay. Uh, of a loop of coil or wire tubing or other. Yeah, let's see if it says magnetic dipole antenna here. We call it loop, but it is a magnetic, small loop magnetic dipole. Yeah, here you go. It has magnetic dipole, yeah. But the small loop antenna is also known as a magnetic loop or a magnetic dipole because a loop, a current loop is a magnetic dipole. Since the response of an electrical is small, receiving loop is proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux through the loop. At higher frequencies, when the antenna is no longer electrically small, the current distribution of the loop may no longer be uniform in the relationship between the response. In the case of transmission, the fields produced by the electrically small loop are the same as an infinitesimal magnetic dipole, okay? Whose axis is perpendicular to the plane of the loop. So we did see a magnetic, ah, here you go. Yeah, this is also is a magnetic dipole antenna. The flux of the current is through here, okay? It doesn't have to be a circular geometry. It can be a square geometry too, provided it is still a loop. Provided it's still a loop, okay? Oh, okay, so let's write that down here. There are two types of antenna, the straight antenna, and the dipole antenna, and the loop antenna, magnetic dipole antenna. Okay. In both cases, we have uh, an AC circuit flowing through, through them, okay? 
producing an electric and magnetic, producing electric and magnetic fields that change in time. These fields induce their electromagnetic counterpart, okay? Producing an electromagnetic wave. You know, that's how we can, the, everything that we can do in this chapter is something like that, okay? It's very qualitative. We study this, you know, to study this in a quantitative fashion, we need calculus, advanced calculus. The, uh, the best thing we can do, best thing we can do about this chapter, this chapter is to describe what happens in a qualitative fashion. Huh? to move towards a more quantitative approach we need the advanced calculus differential equations you know things like that okay but basically is that what i said it comes from 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 the laws of physics, okay? Specifically, it comes from those two equations here. It comes from those two equations. We can derive mathematically, we can find mathematically that by using those two equations, we can derive an electromagnetic wave that travels with a speed. And by the way, the speed is the inverse of the square root of this guy here. If you do the mass, you get 300,000 kilometers per second. I'm gonna, I'm gonna write that down. Okay, if you use, uh, no, if you use those two equations, huh, I did the, uh, there's some C here that I have to figure out what's happening. Okay, so what uh, predicts this electromagnetic wave The following two equations. Okay, those two equations here. And uh, and it's gonna be a special, a special uh, format of this equation, okay, without this term by solving mathematically these two equations simultaneously we obtain the equation of a wave having a speed of having a speed given by the following relation. Hmm. It'll be like that. The speed is V equal is the inverse. It's not just the inverse, but the inverse of this square root. That's where the speed of the light comes from. It comes from these two terms here, which by the way, ends up being 300,000 kilometers, approximately, right? 300,000 kilometers per second. It doesn't need to be both phased. You can do the math on your own too, there at home, right? 300,000 kilometers per second. Okay, and 10.05 already, yeah? 
So we need to move forward with our, I'll cover a little bit more of that next uh, lecture meeting, okay? But now I want to go for the, for the lab. And don't forget the lab is a report for labs five and six are due now. Are due now and let's see and uh, we're gonna have a break, break from 10.06 to 10.21, right? AM, any question before you go into the break? Okay, so, Okay, right, so let's go for a break. I will pause my recording. Let's I'm back here and So let's take attendance, right? Lab attendance, you go. Know. Today is the 26th. Okay, and then I'm gonna need to get your, upload your spreadsheet. Raw data. That's going to be it's going to be lab six, lab seven. Lab seven. We should do circuits, okay? This is another type of circuit that is gonna be using the flashlight bulb bulb. And there's a difference between the flashlight bulb and uh, the other resistors. There's a different behavior between the flashlight bulb and the other resistor that we use, okay? I'm going to help you out here. Let's see, and make sure everything is okay here in those documents. Everything seems to be fine. This one, yeah, everything seems to be fine. That, this one is gonna be a, a shorter one. Thank mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 
Ah, oh, there's something wrong with this one. Okay, so let me check one thing. Yeah, there's definitely there's something wrong with this file. Just now, oh gosh, now I'm just looking. Ah. Okay, so maybe. Now, the problem is this one here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Again, okay. So, what I'm going to do, whatever he named this one here, two zero one. Okay, and now we have uh, everything that we want. Storage. No, that the one I want. Yeah, that's the one I want. The big seven group folder. One, uh, two. Three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay. And now, what? To be volunteer to say that's not what I want. Okay. Okay, so this is stores in parallel. Now let's Open. Oh, there's the key. Nope. Not this one. It's this one. Okay. So, lap seven. No, nope, not the one I want. <laughs> so, data. Lab seven. Flash light bulb. Okay. So what this lab is all about? One. So far, we have seen circuits.
that are made up of omic elements. And what means omic elements? What do we mean, you know? Um, omic elements are elements that obey Ohm's law. Equal to Ri. Okay. However, there are, and let's not forget this law between quotes, right? However, there are many other elements that are used in electric circuits. that do not obey Ohm's law. One of them is the flash, flash light bulb. Flash light bulb, Like bulb is a is a light source. Flashlight, flashlight bulb. Is a light source, right? Is a light source. Is a, an incandescent light source, incandescent light source. So what I want you to do first, you know, download your respective uh, spreadsheet from your group folder. A good folder, okay. And I want to start closing some of the windows that I have here. Okay. And <clears throat> what we are going to do. Let's get the spreadsheet, the, the, this one here. No, nope, not this one. Okay. I'm gonna open my, Spreadsheet, and then you know the first step. What we're going to do? We are going to combine a light bulb in series with a resistor, in series with a regular resistor. In this specific case here, this resistor has eighty-one ohms of resistance value. Okay. And it's going to be a circuit in series with this resistor. It's going to be something like that. Here you go, something like that. Okay. Here's the symbol for the light bulb. I enclosed the light bulb in this circle here. The circle, by the way, means the sun, right? That's the symbol for the sun. And the sun is the source of light. So we adopted everything, every thing that you see in a circuit that has a circle around here means, around it, means that that source is a source of light. 
Okay? The symbol of the source of light comes from the sun, the sun disk, right? The disk of the sun that we see in the sky. And that's the symbol. And it's just a simple circuit that you see right here. And then what's the step-by-step -step procedure for this lab? The first thing that we do, uh, I'm gonna make a list. List of equipment. The materials, right? Procedure. Step-by-step -step procedure, step-by-step -step procedure. So the first material equipment that we're gonna get here is gonna be the digital multimeter. And by the way, I bought a brand new digital multimeter for myself. That one that I had didn't measure current, unfortunately. Let me just show off a little bit of the toys that I bought. Okay, and uh, here you go. That's the one that I bought, right? And it's already start to break down. Oh, what a shame. This, de this device here doesn't measure current. I, I learned only after I bought it. So I ended up buying this other one here. It's a very simple multimeter. This one measure current, electric current. It's very cheap. This one here cost me like around $15. Okay, and that's one example of digital multimeter. Going back to the screen sharing. Digital multimeter and, and then this other device that you need is going to be an electric resistor. The resistor that we are using between should be between 330 and 100 ohms. Okay. The first step that you're going to do measure resistance value of the resistor. Okay, and that's. You know, I gotta punch there my digital multimeter, adjust my digital multimeter to measure resistance. We have the jacks here, just like before, black banana termination to the black jack. Here you go, it's my black and red cables, right? But the difference is that it's not a, a banana with banana termination, but it's an alligator termination. And Clamp back alligator to the end black cable to the end of the black cable, right? To the end uh, of the black cable. Clamp alligators to the end, uh, to the two ends of the resistor, to the two ends of the resistor. And just like that. Make sure you use the most, I tell my students to use the most sensitive scale of my, of the multimeter. Let me tell you what I mean by sensitive scale, the most sensitive scale. Okay, here's my, here's my multimeter, okay? This multimeter that you see here in my hand is different from this multimeter that you see in the PowerPoint slides. The multimeter and the PowerPoint, but slide is much larger device, more expensive. Okay. But this one here is smaller, but do almost the same thing as the big, as the big uh, multimeter. This multimeter can measure AC voltage. Uh, yeah, we see a little squiggly there. Uh, and I'm going to stop blurring. Oh, no, not that one I want. Stop blurring my. Back here. Okay. See, uh, at this point, this moment here, my multimeter is off. And if I go this way, I would be measuring the voltage, DC voltage. Look at the symbol here. The symbol here is a straight line, right? With straight dots as well. But if you go the other way, 
this multimeter can also measure AC voltage. That's why you have this field in there. And this multimeter has different scales. You have scale for 1,000 volts, DC, 200 DC, 20 DC, and so on, okay? And it's the same thing with the, with the measurement of the resistance. The resistance measurement of this multimeter is this one here. You have to adjust the, the knob of my multimeter, and that's what we do here. Okay, so the first thing is measure resistance of the resistor, right? Measure resistance value of the resistor and the resistance value of the resistor is right here in this table. This resistor is roughly 81.12 and you gotta display the right number of sequence digits. In the next one, measure the resistance, resistance of the light bulb. You can do that. Okay. Professor, are you supposed to be showing something? Oh, yes. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Next, there you go. Use most sensitive scale. Uh, if you read overload on the screen, go to the next least sensitive scale. Right now. Let's see. Let's match the resistance of the light bulb right here. So, going back, the light bulb disconnected, unloaded. The resistor too must be unloaded. That's the way to measure. Uh, measure the resistance value of the resistor. The resistor must be by itself. The resistor cannot be connected to any circuit, okay? When you make this measurement. And then you do the same for the light bulb. Measure the resistance value of the light bulb. while disconnected from any circuit, just like the case of the, okay? In this case, we say that unloaded, uh -huh. unloaded resistor, unloaded, disconnect, right, disconnected, unloaded light bulb. And then we go ahead and log the value of the resistor here, which is very low, around 1.76 in my case, okay? Okay, so if you read, disconnect everything from the multimeter and then connect light bulb in series with the resistor. And then you're going to you need the proto board or the prototype board. I'm gonna list up the equipment. Proto board or prototype board. Prototype board for, you know, comes from the word the prototype, right? Every time you have a prototype is the very first uh, version of your product or circuit. That's what prototype board comes from. Connect resistor and the uh, you know and the light bulb. I'm serious. Using the proto board. Next power supply. If I need a power supply. And by the way, uh, before you measure the resistor, right? You need the, the uh, banana, huh? banana cable, black banana cable, black cable, uh, let's see, black cable with banana termination, banana termination, red cable, with banana termination. Two alligators, two alligator clips, huh? 
to clamp the end of the resistor. Power supply. And then what you're gonna do? Uh, power supply, red cable to red jack of the power supply. Red cable to red jack of the power supply. You know, resistor in series uh, clamp, uh, clamp one end of the resistor, clamp one end of the resistor with alligator clip. in the red cable, right? Resistor is already connected in series with the light bulb. Resistor is already connected in series to the light bulb. Like bulb in the rocker board. Other end of light bulb connected to the black jack of the of the power supply. through the black cable. Okay, so now we have a circuit closed. Next, set the MM to read voltage. Voltage. Here we have the circuit. Okay, when you turn on the power supply, there will be a current flowing through the circuit. Okay, set the DC voltage and voltage. Connect the MM. between the two ends of the circuit, okay? Connect the DMM between one end of the resistor and and the far end of the light bulb. This you're going to measure V total. That's what you're measuring here, V total. Go. Between closer end, right? Closer end of the resistor and the far end of the light bulb. And now we are going to start taking readings of the V total right here by changing by changing the you know the uh, the value provided by the power supply. Uh, between the closer, the closer end of the resistor and the far end of the light bulb. Okay. 
set the power supply to 10 volts. Let's see how many volts that. 10, 8, right? 10, 8, 6, 4, 2.8. And then invert the polarity, okay? Set power supply to 10 volts and read the, the voltage in the DMM. Repeat step 10 for voltages, eight, six, four, should be 2.8 and 2.8. Uh, and read the votes. Okay, and that's what you end up getting V total. All right, but that, that will be just the positive. Here you go, just the positive. There again. Invert polarity, use the most sensitive scale, invert polarity of the power supply. Invert polarity of the power supply and repeat steps. 10 and 11, because you inverted the polarity, you are going to end up getting a value that's negative for the voltage. Okay, it's gonna be almost the same value. Doesn't, doesn't have to be necessarily exactly the same value. It's gonna be very close. This one is positive three, this one is negative three, right? Here is the same thing. First set of data. Next, let's connect everything from the multimeter and then start from scratch and you're going to measure the current now. Let's see, the current, no, no, it's not the current, sorry. It's not the current, you're going to measure V1. Yeah, you wanna measure V1. Okay. Repeat, uh, I'm gonna. Uh, connect. Uh, EMM. Connect EMM between the closer end of the resistor and the far end of the resistor, right? This one is gonna be V1. Okay, repeat steps, repeat steps 10, 11, and 12. When we do that, now we are going to have the data for V1 here. Positive voltage, negative voltage. And finally, here, have how it looks like in a circuit diagram. Okay, light bulb connected in series with resistor. Then you do for, uh, why is that? Do I have that? Shouldn't have this one. Huh, interesting. Disconnect everything to the multi. You don't need to disconnect everything to the multi. Oh, oh, what's going on here? Huh. Ah, there's something wrong here. Yeah, something wrong in the organization of these slides. Okay, now you you're gonna get the electric potential for the volt for the, the electric potential for the bulb. Okay. 
connect via mama. I'm gonna put this way. This one is gonna be give me less trouble. Connect the DMM between closer end of the light bulb and far end of the light bulb. That's gonna be V sub B. Right? And then you're gonna repeat steps 10. Where, oh, repeat. Repeat steps 10, 11, and 12. When you repeat steps 10, 11, and 12, you end up getting this one here. That's just, uh, okay, we, we came up with one, two, three measurements. Now we need to get to, three sets of measurements. Now we need our four set of measurements. So in terms of measurements, we are 75% done here, almost roughly. And then what you have to do, you go, we invert, right? Disconnect everything, start from scratch. Uh, you don't have to worry about that. Measure current I, now you wanna connect the multimeter in series, okay? To measure, I'm gonna write that down here, to measure the current. Now we will measure the current in the circuit. Put it like that. Start from scratch. That's a good uh, procedure, okay? Because um, the multimeter is gonna be in in series. The, the circuit is always good to start from scratch. Power supply. Uh, let's see. And then grid voltage. Okay, this one here. Red cable to the red jack. Of the power supply. Other end of the red cable. Connected. Positive end of the Multimeter, you know, don't forget the positive end of the multimeter that reads current. Some multimeters have different, uh, that reads current. Sometimes they have a different circuit in that multimeter, one for measuring. You know, sometimes they have different uh, terminations, right, in the multimeter, different jacks for the multimeter, one to measure voltage, the other to measure current. That reads current, okay? Black jack of the, oh, by the way, we, I have to put uh, two alligators, two red, uh, you have two red cables with banana termination, two black cables with banana termination. Black jack of the cable connected to the no black uh, jack of the okay of the DMM connected to the banana termination of the black cable. Other end of the black cable. Alligator clip. Alligator clip. Connected. Alligator clip. Connected to near end of the resistor. Okay, here you go. Oops. 
resistor. This resistor is already in series with the light bulb. Resistor in series with light bulb, right? Far end of light bulb. Connected to the black cable. Other end of the black cable connected to the black jack of the DMM. So we have the closed circuit. I don't have a, let's see here. We're going to measure the current. Now, okay. Uh, Now what you have to do, uh, repeat steps 10, 11, and 12, and measure the current. You went to adjust the, the voltages again. And then I went to invert the polarity, right? First, you're gonna set the power supply to 10 volts. Change the voltage from 8 to 2.8, invert the polarity. And that's what you end up having here. Those are the current values of the electric currents. You did all your measurements now. The only thing that's left now is to do the mass that the software desk for you and plot the graph. What you're going to do that, what you're going to do, what plot you're gonna do, that's what matters now, right? That's what is final. Uh, let's see. Put it here. Plot V bulb versus uh, I. V on the y axis and I along the x axis. Okay, so I want you to do that. Here you go. We are plotting VB. We are not plotting V1, right? If we plot V1, we are going to get a straight line because the, the resistor one is an ohmic element. I'm going to just display, show that to you. See, you, we do get a straight line because it's the voltage across the resistor. But if you plot VB instead, you're gonna get a different graph. See that it's not a straight line anymore. It's not a straight line anymore because the bulb doesn't behave like a nomic element. So I want you to do now, I want you to do that. And I'm gonna take row right now while, I, while you do that. See here, this one, not this one. Yeah, here you go. I took Pacheco, are you there? Let's see. Arthur Pacheco, are you? Oh, yeah, you're there. Good. Did you download the spreadsheet, Arthur? Yes, okay, good. Download. Yes. Did you plot the graph already, or it's too early for that? Oh, already good. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to you. So when once you plot the graph, 
you know, uh, graph plotting. Let's do it this way, graph plotting. Huh? This way, right? Fit a third order polynomial to this graph. Not a, a second order, but a third order polynomial to this graph, okay? And now let's go to Elika. Are you there, Elika? I don't see Elika here. Okay, so next, Brianna. Brianna Valencia, are you there? Okay, did you download the spreadsheet, Brianna? Yes, did you plot the graph? Did you, okay, okay, so the next thing is fit third order polynomial, right? Did you do that too? Okay, you too, uh, Pacheco, Arthur, Arthur Pacheco, did you also fit a third order polynomial there? Okay, hello, Pacheco, Arthur, are you there? Oh, yes, good, thank you, I didn't see it. I saw it now. Next, Yustena Yusef. Are you there, Yustena? I don't see Yustena here. Huh. Okay. Next is Ashley Diaz. Are you there, Ashley? Yes, I'm here. Okay, you download the, the spreadsheet? Uh, yes, I downloaded it. Did you plot the graph? Um, no, I'm working on that right now. Okay, thank you. Next is Natalie. Are you there, Natalie? I don't see Natalie in my list. Let's see, Natalie's here. Okay, Jeanette, are you there? Okay, did you download the spreadsheet? Good. Next, did you plot the graph? Not yet? Okay, still working. That's good. Let's go for the next one. Randy, are you there? Okay. Oh, you plot, you downloaded and you plot the graph, right? Did you fit the third order polynomial as well? Yeah. Okay, good. So, well, so go ahead and start to the other things, right? The, Units, there's no percentage difference for this one. Let's see what's gonna come next. I'm gonna put it here in units, significant figure. I'll get to you, hang it there, Donia. I'll get to you, significant figure and CL, right? Now, Nur, Nur Hassan, are you there? <clears throat> I don't see Noor here. Okay, next is Kaylee. Are you there, Kaylee? I'm still working on plotting the graph. Thank you. Oops, this one here. Yes, this one. Okay, next is Kennedy. Are you there? Yes. Okay, you downloaded the graph, the graph, the spreadsheet? Yes, up to the point of, uh, I'm working on the graph right now. Okay, working on the graph, thank you. Next is Ryan. Ryan, Ryan, I see Ryan here. Okay, yes, okay, good. You download the spreadsheet, did you plot the graph? Okay, did you fit the third order polynomial yet? No? I'm gonna put here working, okay? Okay, good. So Donia, okay, finally you, Donia. It's your turn. Are you there? Looks like Donia is away from her computer now. 
Okay, I'll get back to you, Donia. Once you get back, let me know. And Vanessa, are you there? Vanessa, okay, good. Did you download the spreadsheet? Did you plot the graph? And did you fit the polynomial of third order? All those three tasks, right? You plotted and are still working on the polynomial? Regression equation? Okay, good. So uh, do, do you know how to do that, by the way? Do you folks know how to uh, plot the third how to get the regression equation, right? It's just the same way you do for the linear equation, right? Highlight the data points, right click, add trend line, but now you go here to polynomial and you increase the order to three. Okay, here you go. Oh, I forgot to display the equation. I forgot to display the equation. But that's how you do it. Blanca Hernandez. I see Blanca here in my list, in my roster. Okay, good. Did you download the, the spreadsheet? Did you plot the graph and did you fit the third order equation? Yes, everything? Good. So go ahead and start working on the unit six figures and see all right. And Joshua Jimenez. Yes, I did everything already. Everything? Yeah. What about the... On the, on the... I'm just working on the sick figs now. Ah, you're working on sick, sick figs, okay. I want to share... Um... Okay, so let me see one thing. I want to do something that's slightly different than what I have been doing, because this graph is a third order. Okay. If you have time, we're going to do that. Okay. If you don't have time, we're going to leave for another opportunity. So next is Alondra. Are you there, Alondra? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Here you go. Do you download the spreadsheets, Alondra? Uh, yes, I downloaded it. Plot the graph. I'm working on that still. Okay. Working. Next is Daisy. Is she working on the graph? Okay. Working on the graph. That's good. Next is Yesenia Montes Rodriguez. I don't see Yesenia here. Senia, yeah, Senia is not here. Let's go for the next one, Lady Lud. Mm. Yes, I download the the spreadsheet and uh, I plot the graph and I'm working on significa. So let's see. You you downloaded the spreadsheet, right? You plotted the graph, yes. too? But but what about the the fit to the third order equation? Oh no, I'm working on another one. Do you know how to do that? No, I'm I'm working on that. Right now, okay. And you know how to do that, right? Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. Let's see this one here. Okay. Okay, total of the students is going to be. 14, I have uh, 15, good. We have 14 students here, 11, 15 already. Huh? Let's take a little break while you finish that. Uh, break. Graph plotting, okay. Break uh, between 11, 18, right? And 11, 33. 
And I'm going to stop sharing and stop recording to I am back here and good. So here is the graph that I have, right? So note C, what you have to note see here, that there are some elements that don't behave like in a straight line. Here's the graph of the bulb, right? But you also saw the graph for the resistor. If you take the slope of this graph here, you're going to get the value of that resistor that you measured before, right? But, uh, and here again is the graph for the bulb. It doesn't behave in a straight line. It's not every device that is an ohmic device. This, uh, in the case of this light bulb, we are going to fit a third order polynomial to this graph, okay? Second order wouldn't work, okay? You can see second order wouldn't, wouldn't work. Let's try second order just for the fun of it, just for the sake of it. See that? Uh, yeah. Let, let, let me undo this thing here. It didn't go the way I wanted. Okay, let's try it again. Um, first, I'm gonna plot, I'm gonna fit that second order polynomial, right? Just to, you know, just for the sake of fun here. You see that what you end up getting? You end up getting something that's not even close to the plot. You end up getting actually a straight line, right? Looks like a straight line to me. And look at the R squared. The R squared is not a good one either. Now, if I replace this trend line with a polynomial of order three, you get a better fit with a larger R square. Okay? Look here at the equation. And look at the R square as well. 0.9957. And if you want to know what, how it looks like, right, in the, the R square for the other two, here you go, for the linear, the linear R square, 0.89. And then the R square for the Polynomial of order two, 89 as well. Just is slightly better than the linear one. Just is slightly better. You know, this, this parabola is so close to a straight line that we can hardly see it. It's superimposed to the other one. So if you want to do even better than what you see here, 0 0.9957, what do we do? You plot. You know, you do a polynomial of order four, right? Yeah. And I'm going to, but it's not going to be much different from the other one. Here you go. Polynomial of order four, nine, nine, six. Okay. Yeah. The R square of polynomial of order four is just slightly better than the polynomial, than the R square for the polynomial of order three, right? The higher the order of the polynomial, the better the fit you end up getting. But of course, the more complicated the equation becomes, right? If I were working in real life, you know, I would stop right in here. The gain, because the gain in the confidence level is so small, that doesn't justify me to keep on working with a complicated equation like this one. 11.39 right now. Let's see someone here. Uh, what format do you want for the axis numbers? You mean the, in the graph? In the graph, right? 
Let's see. Yeah, you can put regular numbers. You can put regular numbers there. It's easier to read regular numbers because you, you see it goes only to 10 minus 2, right? Yeah, put the regular numbers there. Let's see if I can do that myself. Oh, so just, just enough to see that they are different. Just enough. I believe just, just one will be enough. Let me check here. I'm going to change here to number. You know, here you go. Let's see. One. That small place. No. One that small place is not enough. You've got to put two, apparently. Yeah. You have to put two that small places. Okay. And here should be the same problem, right? Same, same thing. Let's see. Uh, numbers. See, zero decimal places. See, you have minus one, minus one repeating here. So let's go to one decimal place. Let's see if this do, will do the job. Yeah, one decimal place does the job for this one because it goes from 0.5 to 0.5, right? One, that, one decimal place is enough for the y-axis. For the x-axis, you need to put two decimal places there. You don't need to worry about uh, significant digits right in the axis here. All you need to do is to display the a number that uh, has enough the small places for you to distinguish one from the other. And we have 19 minutes to go. Let's go back here to the roster. Professor? Yeah. Sorry, just really quick. With a graph, uh, would you like us to have the information for the different degrees of polynomials? No, or no, just... No, just the, the one for the third order. We're doing that just for, for the fun, right? For enough of it. So you can okay. compare what you end up getting. Now, let's see if I can delete the fourth order polynomial. Yeah. Wow, I was lucky enough to delete the fourth order polynomial. Okay, thank you. Okay. I'm going to delete the whole graph. Yeah. Now let's go back here and Artur Pacheco. So you finish everything, Artur? Units, sig figures, right? Sig figs. Yeah, okay. CL2. Yeah, okay. There, there's a, a little, you know. There's a little secret about these types of graphs that are non-linear in Excel. I want to share that with you, okay? This R square that you see here, okay, is a NAR square that applies only to linear graphs, to linear fits, okay? And there is a, a little trick. Uh, well, we're running out of time. There, there's a little trick to figure out how to get the right R square. Okay, uh, I wanna share with you. Let's see, you know, let, let's leave for another opportunity, okay? But just remember, this R square that you see here is an R square that applies only to linear graphs, not to, parab to, to parabolic or hyperbolic graphs or any other graphs, okay? And there is a little trick that you can do to figure out the exact confidence level from this R squared, okay? And we'll leave that for another opportunity. In this meantime, if you have time, okay, I want to look at the other students. Elika, are you there? Is she back? Elika, I don't see Elika here. Okay, next. Brianna Valencia, are you there? Yes. Did you do the units? Did you work on the units? Yes. Sig fix. And CL. Ah, okay, good. So if you are, you can go. And you Stena, are you there? I don't see you, Stena. In my list, Ashley, did you plot the graph, Ashley? Yes, I did. Okay, fit the third order equation there. Yeah. Units? Did you work on the units? Um. Yeah, I'm fixing the units right now. 
Ah, okay, so you're working, right? So let's put W here. Natalie Espinosa. I don't see Natalie. Jeanette, did you plot the graph, Jeanette? Is Jeanette there? Okay, I can't hear from Jeanette. I'm putting a little star here. Randy? Randy Bautista? Yeah, did you? Okay, last time you told me that you plot, you fit the third order equation, right? What about the units? Did you finish the units? Units, sig figs, and CL. Kind of? Okay. Okay, so if you want to go, you can go. And Noor Hassan. Doesn't look like Noor is here. Okay, next is Kaylee Hernandez. Are you there, Kaylee? Okay, did you plot did you plot the graph, Kelly? Good. Did you fit the third order equation there to the graph? Working on it. Okay, so you're working on that. Next is Kennedy. Did you plot the graph, Kennedy? Yes, I plotted the graph. Do you fit the third order equation there? I did in question just because it looks a little wonky when I put in the equation because there it, it is longer. Is it okay if I have uh, the column wider? Okay, so let me see if I understand the your group number three, right? Yes, can I show you what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, let, let, let me plot from your own from your own data. Okay, let's see what uh, uh, is VB, right? You did VB and I. Right? Insert. Okay. Let's see. Here, it looks like that, right? Yes. Okay, so trend line. Let's see. Polynomial 3. And then display equation and R square. Okay. Uh, did you get something like that? Yeah. So, uh, so what's the problem? Oh, no, there's no problem. It's just when I put the uh, the regular equation into the into the table. No, uh, oh, oh, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see what you mean. Type yes. the, okay, type the equation to the table, right? Yeah, do that. Uh-huh. You can do that. That's okay. Because okay. I know uh, it makes everything else look a little, uh, -huh. uh but as, that's okay. as long as it's okay. Yeah, you okay. can copy, you know, you can copy and you go. Copy and paste. Oh, I can't cannot paste it for some reason. Let's try again. Copy and and paste it. Let's see. Okay, now you paste it. And then right. you know what's gonna be here? It's gonna be I, right? Because it's the current. And then you, you know, uh, font, upper script, superscript, right? And so on. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, five. I. Okay, and then you can expand the cell too to look better. Uh, that's uh, that's those are the little tricks that you learn as you work more and more with Excel. You can put the eye a little bit far away. Next one is gonna be here. Okay, and if you want to italicize too, so the eye looks better. Here you go. No. All right. You go. That's how the, the equation looks like in my thing. Uh, I, I I expanded the, you know, I made it longer, right? Right. So you can see the full equation there. All right. Thank you so much for that. Okay. Welcome. So I'm going to fix that and then I'll, I'll finish my sig figs. I got the units done. 
Okay, you got the units done. Okay, so let's see here. You fit the third order. You got the units done. You're working on the six fix. Okay. And next in line is Ryan. Ryan, you finish your third order equation there? Yes. Okay, good. So what about the units? Are you able to do the rest? Everything, including the CL? Okay, so if you wanna go, you can go. What about Vanessa Bonilla? Are you there, Vanessa? I finished the unit six kids and see. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so I'm gonna give you like pandas here. Next is oh wait a minute, I skip it. Uh, Vanessa is here, right? Donia, are you there, Donia? I don't hear from Donia. Doesn't look like she's there. Okay. Okay, so next is Blanca Hernandez. Are you there, Blanca? Hello, Blanca. Okay, good. So did you finish the, the units? Okay, what about the sig figs? Okay, and then the CL2, right? Okay, good. So if you want to go, you can go. Uh, what about Joshua? Yeah, I finished everything, including everything? the sig figs as well. Okay. Just the sig figs they're working on, you said? No, no, I finished that as well. Okay, good. Okay, if you want to go, you can go. Alondra, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, did you plot the graph, Alondra? Alondra? Uh, yeah, I did. Fit the third order equation? Yeah, I did. Unit six fig CL. Yeah, it's all completed. Confusing, <laughs> is that? Oh, uh, completed. My bad. I ah, completed. completed. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. So if you can, if you wanna go, you can go. Let's see, Daisy. Okay, did you plot the graph, Daisy? All done. Okay, good. So if you wanna go, you can go. Yes, Senia. Yes, Senia is not here, right? What about the lady loads? Um, I finished the six things, the third order, um, the other one else. Okay, so you finish up to the six fix, you said? Uh, yes. Okay, and you're working on the CL, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, thank you. Let me save that. We have you know, seven more minutes. Let me know if you have any questions. We're almost over here. And Okay. Jeanette Garcia, are you there, Jeanette? Okay, I will stop sharing this screen. Okay, and if you have any questions, let me know. Let's see here. Now you're ending and doing. He said you're missing a key ingredient, and it is fate. It is the thing that started. Single bad day. I don't. 
It's a bad day at the little. And I'll do 